Hello, I'm Sam Lutz, and this is Izzy over there at the computer, and Antonio on standby. We are in Rasmussen's seventh period astronomy class talking about the constellations. Now our constellation is the Summer's Triangle, but it's most commonly known as the Navigator's Triangle. And the Summer Triangle is one of the most familiar patterns in the summer night sky in the Northern Hemisphere. Here's a few pictures as some of the examples. Hopefully they're clear enough from the camera right there. The three bright stars that mark the vertices of the Summer Triangle are Altair, Deneb, and Vega. Deneb being here, Vega being up top. The star pattern makes it easy to locate each of the three constellations because it's just a triangle. The Summer Triangle is also noticeable. No, the Summer Triangle is as noticeable in the summer sky as Orion constellation is in the winter. In fact, the asterism is so prominent in the sky that it was once used for navigation. It was referred to as the tri Navigator's Triangle by the U.S. military navigators before GPS systems and other navigational equipment took over. In the summer months, the Summer Triangle can be found directly overhead in mid-northern latitudes, but it is visible at other times of the year, too. In spring, it lies to the east in the early morning hours, and in fall, it can be seen in the west in the evening hours until November. In mid-northern latitudes, the asterism can be seen at any time of the year at some point in the night. In southern latitudes, the summer triangle appears upside down and is visible in low in the sky in winter. In northern latitudes, the three stars can easily be located in the evening sky in June and July. Vega, which lies at the apex of the summer triangle, can be found in the east. It is the brightest star in the eastern sky and is very easy to find. All three stars are bright enough to be visible even from light polluted urban areas in the summer months. The three stars of the summer triangle, as mentioned, are among the brightest stars in the night sky. Vega, or also known as Alpha Lyrae, is the brightest of the three. Deneb Alpha Cygni is the dimmest, yet most luminous at, and by far the most distant. Altair, or Alpha Aquile, is the nearest of the three on Earth, only 16.7 light years away, while Vega is not much farther at a distance of 25 light years. Deneb, on the other hand, is located at a distance of 3,550 light years from the solar system. It is the most distant first magnitude star, and its brightest is greatly diminished by the distance. All three vertices of the summer triangle are bluish white stars belonging to the spectral class A. Vega is located to the northwest corner of the summer triangle, and M marks the northeast, the northeast corner, and Altair sits in the southern corner. Vega and Altair. Altair Alpha is the brightest star in the constellation. Although the eagle star marks the eagle's head, Alter belongs to a special class A A seven V, which mean which meant that is the blue blue head main sequent star. It has a magnitude of all point seven and sixteen seventy three light years distant from the solar system. It's classified as the delta <laughs> type. Well, the star has 1.79 and it is 10.6 times more <coughs> than the sun. And if you would be so kind as to read Vega as well, we're a little short on members today. Altar is the... Vega, one above. Vega is the brightest star in the lunar constellation and the fifth brightest star in the night sky. It has the highest distillation. Alta Lunda. The star visible to the south Vega remind observes in the ancient times of the day. The string instrument is how constellation got its name. Several star in Vega is and friendly stars. It can be seen in Brahma from binoculars. Nicely done. And our third star will be read by Izzy. Deneb. Deneb can be found at the end of the line of bright stars to the south of Vega. It is, however, easier to find by looking for a big cross in the northern sky, a pattern slightly resembling a kite. Deneb is the brightest star of the northern cross, the most prominent star pattern in the Cygnus constellation, and one of the most easily recognized asterisms in the northern latitudes, next to the Big Dipper, Little Dipper, and Cassiopeia W. The northern cross is significantly larger than its southern counterpart, counterpart the southern cross, located in the constellation Crux. 
Deneb has, a ba has the Bayer designation Alpha Cygni. It is a blue-white supergiant star with the, with the stellar classification A2IA. It has an apparent magnitude of 1.25, which makes it the 19th brightest star in the sky, and it lies at a distance of 3,550 light years distant from Earth. The star is 19, more, 19, 19 times more massive than the sun, and has 203 times the sun's radius, and is 196,000 times more luminous. Deneb marks the swan's tail, while the bright albiro, Beta Cygni, marks the bird's head. Vega appears three times as bright as Deneb because it is closer to us, but Deneb is by far the most luminous of the three stars and one of the greatest supergiant stars known. And of course there is the ancient Greece, Greek myth behind it. The constellations Aquila, or the star Altair, and Cygnus, or Deneb, are linked by a, Greek, by a Greek myth. When Zeus fell in love with the goddess Nemesis, she did not return his affection. Zeus then decided to turn himself into a swan, and he persuaded Aphrodite to take the shape of an eagle and pretend to pursue him. Nemesis saw the swan being pursued and gave it refuge. Zeus is said to have placed the constellation Swan, or Cygnus, an eagle, Aquila, into the sky to commemorate the, the success of his conquest. The mythology of the Navigator Triangle itself has always been a vague and undefined thing, only starting to be included in astronomy books around the 1950s. It is said it's got its nickname from members of the U.S. military who used it before modern forms of navigation and GPS systems. The constellation got its second nickname, the Summer Triangle, from the fact that it is easy, it is easy to see in the night sky only during summer. Yet still, these names offer the most minimal origin story possible about the constellation, and no clearer explanation seems to exist. My great-grandfather, a long-past veteran of World War II, had a simple opinion about the Navigator Triangle that he passed along the generations of my family. He always believed that those three bright stars only shone when the soldiers needed them, and that they existed only for the purpose of guiding armies. My great-grandfather had all kinds of crazy opinions like that, but who knows, maybe there is an air of truth to it. Maybe, years ago, a young soldier lost his way and fell in the middle of nowhere, and the universe took pity on him. Perhaps they brought him into the stars and turned him into the three that formed the Navigator Triangle. After all, the constellation vanishes under the horizon during the winter months when it is too cold for soldiers to be fighting wars, as if the stars are resting for the coming warm months. And when those warm months come, the stars Vega, Altair, and Deneb crawl back up into the sky from their slumber in a great large triangle, an, an arrow shape, almost. As the spring melts away into the summer, the Navigator Triangle goes to work, answering to lost soldiers and pointing them in the right direction where a compass and a map fail. Then, just like the year before and the year to come, summer fades to fall and the stars slowly crawl along the sky back to the horizon, and once fall gives way to winter, they go to rest. Thus, the cycle repeats. That concludes our speech on the Summer Triangle. Thank you all for watching. Okay, and I do have one commentary. I think it's really excellent presentation. I was one of those military <coughs> navigators before we had GPS using celestial navigation to get myself around the world and I relied on this. I called it the Navigator's Triangle. Let's hear it for them.